Netherlands, Denmark, Britain, all those are states and countries in which you have democratic uh, ruling aside monarchy, aside monarchy ruling. Now, monarchy ruling is a ruling that is going through by blood. Okay, so if my mother was the queen, I would be a princess and most likely to be the queen as well. And this is for ages and ages to come. We believe that uh, we have two cases. We have in cases in which this monarchy has a lot of influence about both political and uh, uh, um, the way they present the people. And in these cases, we believe it's not legitimate because no one shows them and it stands against democratic values in which we're going to show you in our first point. And we have cases in which they are only like a symbol of the country, only represent the people and the society, in which we believe this is not uh, legitimate because it's a waste of a lot of money and because they, do, again, weren't chosen and sometimes give bad influence to the people, in which we're going to show you in our second point and third point. Now, we want to clarify some substantial uh, differences between monarchy and any other symbols, symbols like the national anthem, symbols like the flag, etc. First of all, we believe that in monarchy you cannot say, no, this is wrong, no, this is not symbolized me. This is something that was decided a long time ago and the people doesn't have, don't have a say over it. We cannot decide that this is wrong and change it. So, no, no, thank you. The second thing is that, uh, um, the second thing is that in monarchy we are talking about human. We are not talking about like symbols like uh, a vase of water that cannot do anything. We are talking about people with actions, with uh, purposes, with things they say and things they do that represent the people. Again, in these cases we waste much more money than we waste on our flag and our national anthem and uh, it actually harms the, all the basic values of democracy. Now, um, uh -huh. Just one clarification, no thank you. We have no problem having a character that will represent the people. We have no problem with that, but we want this character to be selected, elected by the people, in which in monarchy we don't have and it's not happening. So let's begin with our first point. Yes. What is the relevance to a symbol to democracy? Romania has a symbol, tra uh, Dracula, for example. It doesn't mean that we chose him or that we didn't choose him. Yeah, but the fact that your symbol is maybe someone at a mythological uh, uh, character that may or may not live 100 years ago, and you decide if you want to believe in that or not, is is much different than a queen that is sitting on her chair and do things and have sayings that influence you directly right now, and you cannot change it and you cannot do anything about it. Now we have three main problems with a uh, uh, monarchy regarding how it harms the values of democracy. The first problem is the fact that the main idea of monarchy comes into contradiction with the main idea of democracy. And how is that? Because well, in monarchy, you they get the power by legacy. You get the power by blood. It means that some people are born differently and not equal as other people. And this is actually set against any uh, basic uh, value of democracy in which we believe that we all equal, that we all should have equal opportunities. No, thank you. But in this case, some people get more opportunities, some people are better only because they were born to some certain people. Now, more than that, we believe that in this case, we have people that rule even though they were not elected by the people. So the people, which is supposed to be the sovereign uh, voice in the country, which is supposed to uh, decide what's happening, in this case, do don't decide what's happening. In this case, doesn't have a saying, and this is very problematic for us. The second reason why we believe that it harms democracy is the fact that the monarchy idea, no thank you, is old and is outdated, and it preserves a, a, a lot of uh, preserve an old and un uh, updated idea that do not uh, go with the ideas we have today, that do not go with the democracy, and that we believe that maybe there, that we don't, we know today that between the blood I have and the blood that uh, Queen Elizabeth has, there is no difference, maybe except our blood type, but this is completely something else. We know that power and the ability to rule doesn't go by blood. We know that. We And those ideas of keep doing it are old, and in a world that uh, wants to keep going, in a world that wants to develop more and more, we believe that harms democracy and that harms this essence. Now, the third reason, 
just a sec. Now, the third reason is that we believe that most of the public actually does not don't support the uh, monarchy, as we see in polls, as we have the public uh, uh, talk in this day. But even in the cases of the public that do uh, support the monarchy, we believe this is not a free choice and actually a bit of not rational choice. And I will further explain that after the POI. Ma'am, uh, you were talking about the fact that monarchy promotes all the values. Then how can you explain that Netherlands is such a liberal country, even if it actually has a king? Thank you. We believe the Netherlands is a liberal country, but we believe that the Netherlands can be more liberal without the monarchy. We believe that the Netherlands will be even more liberal without keep on preserving some old and outdated ideas that do not go with the ideas of the liberal country as they present it. Now, why we believe this is not a free choice? Because we believe that since day one, since I was born, I was raised and educated to love the queen. I sang, the, God bless the queen. I saw the queen on my money all the time and I was raised that the queen is the best thing ever. I was raised that I want to be a princess when I'll grow up. And I have this I, this idea that I can be a queen because I can see the queen every day in front of my eyes. Now this is a blind uh, admirism. This is a blind uh, admiring of some character that actually leads, uh, present, prevent us from the fact to think rationally and count and, uh, and, and criticize it. Now to the no, second no. point. No, thank you. To the second point. We believe that there is a practical harm to the country and to the people. We have two, uh, uh, two harms. The first harm is economical harm. We believe that when we buy a baby, 2,000 uh, uh, leech um, uh, um, pacifier with diamonds on it, this is problematic. This is not a good use of tax money. This is taking the money from people and the money that's supposed to go back to the people in democratic country and give it to only a small group of people that they will be the only one who will benefit from it, especially in case and in time of crisis like now that we have people uh, uh, with no food, that we have uh, some very poor uh, uh, places in our country and instead of using the money to that, we spend lots and lots and lots of money on this royalty. Now, the second thing is that we believe they do not actually uh, uh, present well the society. We believe that, first of all, the fact that they do not present well the society, and that is supposed to be presented by the government, by the rulers of the country, is against democracy. And the second of all, we believe that when Prince Harry goes and drinks and have prostitutes in the room and do drugs, and this is the example he sets to the entire world that this is what he's doing, and this is how the English, uh, the English people that he represents act. This is reflects poorly on those. This is reflects poorly on the English people. This is, and they cannot do anything. They cannot change it because he is monarchy, and they cannot affect on the side that he is there. And we believe that he is not changing his way, and don't think of the consequences before he, because he knows no one will take me off my chair. I don't need to be reelected. Then he has a legitimacy to do so. So I show you why monarchy is against democracy, against the people, and therefore should not be in our world. Thank you. Thank you as well. Just a second. Okay, we will now call for the first speaker of Team Opposition to deliver his substantive and rebuttal. Ladies and gentlemen, what we have from Team Proposition today is a very simplistic approach to this. And their the first problem that we have with this is that they don't even tackle the motion. What they have to, uh, to show to us today is that monarchy is not compatible with democracy. They have to show us that they are mutually exclusive. They not they do not have to show they have. 
to really show incompatibility. They really have to show that monarchy influences in a bad way democracy. We beg of them to show this to us. Now, before I prove to you how there is a place for monarchy in uh, democratic countries uh, with our two points, first of all, I'll talk about the democratic process and how it is a, a new even more democratic country through referendums and through the things that the Queen does. And Raluca will talk to you about the symbolism, the cultural symbolism of the Queen and about how this is really, really important. But before I do all of these, I'll have a few points of rebuttal on what the population has been telling us today. Now, first of all, they have been talking to us about symbols and about how, how the Queen is a fourth symbol upon the people. Now, we believe that we have two responses to this. First of all, South Africa, an ex-British colony, decided, well, we do not want the Queen to be our symbol anymore. They held a referendum. We do not want to be the Queen to be our uh, representative anymore. We do not want her to be our symbol anymore. And they actually uh, are not anymore a British colony. They are not under the symbol of the Queen anymore. And our second response is, is what is the problem with having cultural symbols? We have no problem with this. All countries have cultural symbols. Countries have cultural yeah. symbols because of their history, ladies and gentlemen. And we believe that, for example, when, when it comes to the UK, the Queen is a perfect representative of this. Now, their next point was about that they waste money. We believe we have also two things to say to this. First of all, it brings a lot of money, ladies and gentlemen. The monarchies, the representative, a lot of people go to see the Queen every day and this brings in uh, not only tourism points, but a lot of money because they do have to pay a lot of money in order to actually go see her castle. We believe that it, we do not waste money as a state onto this and second of all we don't see any relevance to democracy to this we do not see any relevance to the economic well, no thank you to the economic way for democracy now and they tell us their next point about harms and they brought three harms i'm going to debunk them one by one first of all contradiction to the idea that monarchy is a contradiction to the idea of democracy we do not believe that people do not have people do not have the power to choose when it comes to monarchy. People do have a power to choose. Like when it comes to the UK, people choose their prime minister, ladies and gentlemen. People choose, yeah. oh, thank you, David Cameron, in order to represent them. They do have this power, so we believe that the democratic process is not harmed. So we believe that, second of all, it is an old idea. We believe that, first of all, Sorry. the ability to rule and have executive power really, really goes by choice because it is the choice of the people to elect the people, the one that actually, uh, in a second, any of you decided. Uh, we believe that the, the, those uh, the people actually choose who represents their, their executive power and who represents their will in that state. No. Shouldn't they be able to choose who represents them to the entire world? They're only represented by. The okay, state. we believe that David Cameron stands firmly to represent UK throughout the world right now. We believe that that is abundantly clear. And the second thing we have here is that these aren't all like these. If, even if these are old ideas, they are not promoted because, as Monica has told you in a POI. The Netherlands has, has a queen and it is a very, very liberal society. It has not impacted the democratic uh, process in any way. And then they tell us that most people don't support monarchy. We believe that people love monarchies, ladies and gentlemen. They love the queen. They so, do actually believe in their queen as a cultural symbol and not more than that. We believe that they know who has the power in that state. They know that the prime minister, when we talk, when we talk about the UK, has the power in that state. And then they tell us about this blind admiration concept. First of all, we believe that all girls want to be princesses. We do not believe in that point. And second of all, we believe that people it is okay for people to admire culture. It is okay for people to admire their cultural values that they stand for as a country, just as it is okay for them to play with a flag on the table. We believe that that is clear. And then on the economic, uh, on the economic point, I have already sir. responded, no thank you, sir. When I have told you that they have, they bring in a lot of tourism, and that does not only apply to the UK, it also applies to Japan and to the Netherlands, which are also monarchies. And I believe that these things that they have brought, they do not prove that uh, monarchy and democracy are not incompatible. We beg of them to respond, and that's about it with what they have said today. No, thank you. Let's move on to my first point, democratic process. Let's take a step back. What is democracy, ladies and gentlemen? We believe that democracy is when the people have power. It is that simple. If the people have power to elect their leaders, the people actually are happy in that society. The people actually have live in a democratic society. We sir. believe that. No, thank you, sir. We believe that people do choose their ruler when it comes to the UK, when it comes to Netherlands, when it comes to Belgium, 
and when it comes to Japan. It is so, they represent the people when it comes to their will register because there is a difference. Like for example, David Cameron or uh, Tony Blair in the past years has represented the will of the people in the UK through the laws that they impose. That is the kind of representation uh, representation that they need from the so, one that they elect, not the representation like as a cultural symbol, because nobody can really be the queen when it comes to that. And we believe that, first of all, monarchy is compatible with democracy because the queen even has to compensate for this bloodline thing that they have been talking about. Look, how does the queen does this? We believe that, second of all, we'll talk to you about, about the benefits. And this is what the queen does. First of all, we have a lot of referendums that are actually proposed by the queen. We believe that this even leads to more democracy because the referendum is actually when the people go to choose something and when the people are actually asked about something. We believe that that is very, very good. And we have examples of this. For example, the queen proposed a referendum in the Falkland Islands and they asked, uh, she asked them, do you want to be part of Argentina or do you want to be part of the UK? And they yes. responded, no, thank you, ma'am. I'm sorry about that. That uh, they uh, want to be 99.48% part of the UK. So they even hold these things that even apply to even more, lead to even more power to the people. We believe that it's clear. And you no, know, thank you. Like, for, for example, there was a referendum for the, for the issue of gay marriage legislation. I mean, that was recently legalized in the UK, and the Queen also had a, a say in that. And no, thank you. We believe that. Let's tackle again the point about economic uh, economics. We believe that, for example, when you are under the ruling of the queen, like for example, also New Zealand is and UK is under the same queen. The economic relations between these two uh, countries will actually exist even when uh, they they actually have permanent uh, economic relations. We believe that that is. Uh, clear and second of all, as I have explained before, the queen really does make a lot of money. So let's see what I have told you. I have told you that team proposition has to do more than just what it did. They have to show that the queen and uh, th that monarchy and uh, democracy are incompatible. We believe that they have not done that until so far. And we have asked a lot of things from them, like for example, what's the relevance of the fact that they waste money to democracy? And we asked of them to bring us relevant examples where, of where the democratic process was actually harmed in uh, by the existence of the monarchy. And second of all, we have proven to you of how the democratic process works, why democracy was implemented, how it is implemented. And if we have it just exactly as it's supposed to be, we believe that for these reasons, you should oppose this motion. Thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, we will now call for the second speaker of Team uh, Proposition to deliver her substantive rebuttal and reputation. Ladies and gentlemen, I will start by talking to you about the burdens of this debate. Yes, they are right. Our burden is to show you that monarchy is not compatible for democracy. As exact, and this is exactly what we tried to do and did successfully in our first speech, and they never refuted. First of all, we showed you a oh, monarchy present, represents old values that do not fit with democracy. How is that? First of all, it hurts equality. You, you, you're not chosen by your abilities, by your skills of how you represent your country, by how much education you have or how much experience. You're only chosen by where you were born and who, and who g gave birth to you. And this is a massive harm to equality and to the people's right to elect to the representatives. In the POI, we asked him, don't the people deserve the right to choose their representatives? To which he said, well, I don't see how this has any connection to this debate. This is the connection. The queen represents the public all abroad, and not only in, as, as a domestic representative, but also abroad as an international symbol. And this is something that is extremely crucial. Uh -huh. No thank you for the well-being of a country. 
The second uh, harm he showed you is the fact that the people's tax money doesn't go to the people they elected. It goes to people who were just born there or, f or for something that was, uh, you know, uh, selected hundreds of years ago and they never had a say to that. This is not just an economic harm. It's the harm of the basic right of the people to choose what they do with their money and, and who they elect. Now, what did we hear in terms of this battle? We heard that South Africa chose not to be under the ruling of the Queen. This is not exactly what happened. South Africa chose not to be under the ruling of England, not the Queen. The Queen remains a symbol. The Queen remains a monarch in, in, in England. South Africa uh, were freed as a nationality. Then we heard about uh, waste of money, no thank you, that we, that, that we will have tourism to the palace. An answer for that is, well, even if the Queen won't have a legal uh, status, people will still come and tour the palaces. We see that in France, we see that in a lot of places in here, your place and gentlemen, we don't see how that actually answers. And second of all, we told us we never showed you the connection to this, to democracy. Again, the connection is the fact that the people's money is basically stolen from them because they never chose this to go to people they never selected. We want to hear a response to that. Uh, yes, I thank you. You have just said that South Africa chose not to be under UK not under the Queen, therefore accepting the fact that the Queen is just a symbol and okay. does not hold thank power. Thank you, thank you, thank you. As a part of the choice not to be under the UK, yes, they chose that the Queen won't represent them. This wasn't the main choice, so we don't see how that fits with your entire case, that people can somehow select their models. Again, oh, this leads me to another point of rebuttal, actually. What is the difference between Dracula and the Queen? Okay, <laughs> first of all, the Queen has an active influence right now, right here. We never heard a response for that. And second of all, Dracula is an individual choice. Yes, it is a symbol that's presented abroad, but it's not the main thing that determines what people abroad think of you, okay? You choose as an individual if you want to celebrate holidays, if you want to celebrate, you know, uh, uh, to conduct uh, certain costumes, you don't celebrate, you, what you don't choose is which monarch represents you. And my last yeah. point, uh, no, thank you. And about old uh, values, Again, we say to this, you never respond to the fact that those old values, what they do is, show, is basically take away the very principles of democracy, equality, the, uh, uh, the election of the people. And they never actually responded to the fact that people are not rational in the way they see the monarchs. They never responded to her analysis about, is about how little girls see her on their bills, on their money, how they see her on television every day. And again, we showed you the difference between yeah. this and other values. No, thank you. So we want to hear a response to that. To their constructive, very quickly, we feel that nothing was really deeply analyzed in this debate, in their speech. We never heard why it is that the queen represents the, the, the will of the people according to the law. This was just asserted. We basically think that because she's not a part of any type of regulation, which will be actually in my point, she doesn't actually have to obey the law. Second thing is, the queen has to compensate for how she was born. Never heard an explanation for this sentence. We'd like to hear that in their in the next constructive speech. And, and then they gave us themselves a list of examples of how the queen affected political processes inside the country. We see gay marriage in England. We see the Falkland referendum. We think this is extremely harmful because the queen was never elected to do that. They themselves gave us the examples that they asked us to give you for how the queen, yeah. no thank you, actually deals with political processes. Now, why is that that it is so bad that the queen is chosen by blood and, how, and she's not under any normal supervision? As royals, you're born to, to a chain of protection. You're basically born to an extremely wealthy family that has a, a, a status that's above the law. They basically, they basically have connections, and we see, we see that especially in England, with, you know, the, the police, with the parliament, and we see that in a lot of uh, cases, for example, Princess Diana's shoplifting, the fact that they tried to hide all sorts of affairs and uh, the, Harry, the Prince Harry's drug use, we see that all the time. And the second type of protection you get is the fact that you have so much legitimacy of the people in the case of Britain. And we see, and again, we divide this into two cases, when you have legitimacy and when you don't have it. Now, now, what, this leads to a few harms. First of all, no one is making sure that they're actually doing what they have to do because they were never elected. What does that mean? We have Prince Harry as the perfect example. He bails out on meetings with, people, with representatives of other countries. He does drugs. He shows up naked yeah. in the newspapers. No thank you. And we cannot think this is the type of person we want to represent us. Nobody can control that because, again, he's never elected. Second of all, it hurts the people's right to be informed because we see a lot of cases, and this is of course the small amount of the cases that, that, that is, it is published later on 
something, some things which we didn't know about the royal uh, family beforehand. These are the representatives, and the people deserve the right to know what happens and what's going on there. But moreover, this shows it in a legitimate light. Why? Because the queen is a part of the law. Because the monarchy is a part of the law, it makes it look legitimate that they can do basically whatever they want without any supervision, without the supervision of the people who are supposed to be the sovereign. And another massive harm is that even in the case they are informed, this is used as a role model. In England, we see that the moment Kate Middleton steps out of the hospital with her baby, the, the website that sells her dress crashes down from the amount of use. People look up to them. They are their role models. And we need more role models that we can supervise. We need role models that are a part of the law, like politicians, for example, that are trialed like everyone else and that are treated like everyone else in most cases. Now we see that this doesn't only go to dresses, this also goes to doing drugs, to bailing out on your duties, and to going around naked as we see in a lot of places. But the most important point here is that this is a part of the law. The people who do those things, again, are part of your legal system. And we believe that with all those harms that we have shown you, side opposition simply cannot step up and tell you, we didn't show you how that's not mutually exclusive to democracy. Because we definitely did that by showing you that it hurts the very principles, how actions and practical harms relate to principles of democracy, and how the very basic idea of having representatives that weren't chosen by the the, the people who are the sovereign hurts that. So what do we want side opposition to do in their next speech? We want them to show us what is, why it is that the queen is identical to other symbols as they try to do and to refute the things we've said about the fact that she has active points. And the more, most important thing they need to do is to show us why it is that it is, that it is justified to take the people their right to select and elect their representatives, and how that doesn't contradict democracy. And I'd be very interested to hear that from their next speech. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can I open the door? Is it okay? <coughs> so how do you hear? I open the door. Okay, we will now call for the second speaker of Team Propos Opposition to deliver her substantive rebuttal and refutation. Thank you, ma'am. We believe that it, it is even more democratic because 
until we see that we have this referendum that we have, we have talked talk to you about. So what is a referendum? It is basically a question that we pose to the population in order to actually solve an issue that might be debated upon in our country. We see that when we have a queen voting for referendums for a lot of things that the people might want, no thank you, we believe that it is a great thing because it gives even more power to the, uh, to the people through this vote. Like we see in the case of the Falkland Island, where they have this, uh, this dispute between uh, Argentina and the UK over over who uh, the Falklands uh, Islands belong. Oh, okay. And we, we saw that, well, uh, the Queen basically vouched for this referendum in Falkland Island asking everybody if they want to be part of the UK or if they want to be part of Argentina. And most of the people, like 99 point something percent, said, well, yes, we do. And therefore, we see that people have actually chosen to be there, that there is no power, no thank you, ma'am. We believe that this way, the, uh, the democratic process is even more relevant in these kinds of countries. Yes. You say right now that the Queen has created the referendum in Falkland Islands. How does that comply with the thing that you say that it has absolutely no power, and that's why it's, not, it's justified that people do not choose? Okay, okay. What we said is that she vouched for this referendum. She said that, well, it would be a great idea if we did. And then the Prime Minister believed that clearly what? We believe that this is, doesn't mean that she has a huge influence, but she does have some influence. It is obvious yeah. that she does. But we don't see it as being harmful, and we don't see it as being incompatible with democracy. All right, moving on. They, they bring up this whole idea of equality. And, well, they say that they don't really, you know, they are kind of above the law. We believe that, first of all, they're supposed to be, to abide by the same law. Second of all, you know, this, this whole thing about the drug abuse, well, we see that rock, uh, rock stars can actually be symbols for countries, and they still do the same things. And rock stars weren't, weren't elected either. We see that there is like, a huge analogy here, and they do the same things, and they have the same problem, and they are not about the law either. They are supposed to abide by the same laws, no, thank you. So we're going to move on to my second point, which is, you know, analyzing some other harm that they brought. And we believe that this whole thing about the economy is quite funny, because they say that, you know, crowns are quite expensive. We say that yes, they might be quite expensive by the fact that we have a queen there. The fact that people want to go to the castle to, to visit it even more than they want to go to a castle that in which once there lived the queen, right now the queen lives there. And there is this, there is this whole idea about the people that want to go there because there is a queen right now. It's that by this thing we have a good tourism. We have a huge points for tourism, and therefore we don't see that it is such a big problem that crowns are uh, uh, crowns are expensive. Yeah, we believe that we have even more benefit than uh, the fact uh, than uh, the harm that they brought. Moving on, see that they say that this, there is this whole old idea about about monarchy, and we say that well. This whole like, old idea that would basically mean in their terms that they're conservative. We see that they're not. We see that we look at Netherlands, for instance, yeah. where a lot of things are, are legal, like, uh, like uh, marijuana, for instance. And we say that this is great because th th this means that the people have more power to choose what, what, is, uh, what they want as long as it is not harmful. And we believe that this basically means that these countries are more liberal, like in the UK with the gay marriage. So on this point, we believe that uh, also uh, team of opposition stands with that. Even more than this, we look at this whole thing about the blood legacy and how they ask us how uh, is any other in any other cultural symbol different or the same as the queen? Well, we believe that it is completely the same. We believe that first of all, well, let's look at drug. Well, it, it wasn't a choice that the proposition seemed to believe. It was simply something that came from our history. Just like the queen is right now in the UK, just like any other uh, monarch is in any other monarch. We believe that the fact that the um, the fact that there is a monarch basically says that this is a cultural symbol, that this is what happened throughout their history. All right, we believe that this is what the symbol means, and we believe that uh, we believe that this point also stands on from opposition. Now, even more than this, they say that they have this irrational behavior. First of all, we don't really see an, an irrational behavior, but even if there was, we don't see that it is such a big problem that it yeah. the, the face on the queen of thank you, sir, on, the, uh, on their, uh, on their banner. We, uh, we don't feel that there is such a big problem in admiring your cultural symbol. We believe that this is perfectly normal. Yeah. No, uh, no, thank you. Now let's just move on to my substantive point, which is the cultural symbol. Uh, where I'm going to tackle this uh, in more depth. So let's look a little bit at what is actually the difference between the, uh, the political representation and the cultural representation. 
representation. We say that when people vote, they vote for their uh, their political representation, like they vote in these monarchies for the prime ministers that do all the job, uh, the, the, that do the same job as in any other democratic country. But we see that in, when it comes to cultural representation, this whole thing comes from tradition and history and not from election ever. Go. You don't understand that the queen is not just a cultural symbol. She has the power of representing you to other countries in, in all monarchy. Okay, okay. The queen represents your country as a symbol of culture. The prime minister represents your country as a symbol of, uh, of the executive power. We believe that with that, um, with that simple proposition, we actually understand it different. So let's just, uh, let's just get back. So, okay, what do people uh, elect in a democracy? They elect executive power. But let's look a little at the cultural representation. We see the monarch as cultural representation. We see that people are okay, and even more than okay, with having a monarchy. We see that they, are, they actually love monarchies, as Ali has stated before. We see that they are, they are celebrating the king's birthday in Japan every year. And we see in the, uh, the UK with the Diamond Jubilee. And we believe that this whole thing basically brings more of their culture uh, more of the culture to the people. They basically emphasize with a uh, with a with the monarch as a symbol, because the monarch represents what their country is and what the country was. And we believe that people like to know that uh, their country is uh, right now what it has always used to be, and that it, it brings the people this whole idea of my country is powerful, my con my country has uh, has uh, has been like um, consistent uh, throughout the history. Even more than this. We say that uh, it, is, uh, it is great because it sends a message to the people that there is someone out there that attends to their base, to all their needs, no matter the political problems, no matter the economic problems. And we see this as being an incredibly great thing on a psychological level. So for all these reasons today, we beg you to oppose. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, we've now called for the third speaker team proposition deliver a speech Israel, we have a government which the people choose. We have a prime minister that does all the work, like blah blah laws, all that. And we also have a president who goes on to places and uh, talks with people that actually represent the country in many many aspects. And he, the people, he is also chosen by the people. That is what an optimal democracy is by Saad Prophecy. That is what we believe a true democracy should be. And they want to preserve actually a model that goes against everything democracy represents. Everything, absolutely everything. And what I'm going to do in my speech is that to show you why this debate clearly goes to us. We're going to do that through main three main areas of class. The first one is the job of the monarch, monarch because that is actually something that was quite a, a problem in this debate. Second, I want to move why is it justified? Why, why, why is there is no justification actually? For a monarchy in a, in a democracy, why that's why we believe there's no place for the monarchy democracy, and then talk about the practical harms of why also we believe there's no place. Let's talk about the job of the monarch. They claim the monarch has just the monarchy family, Queen Elizabeth, just a cute little family that 
people like and that's it. They believe it's only a culture symbol. Now that is false also by the example that they gave us. They gave us the example of Falkland Island. What, what happened there? Well, the Queen said, okay, I support a, I, I support a like, referendum and the referendum happened. Now, by saying that, you're actually saying that the Queen said something, Sorry. it happened, therefore the Queen has power according to your logic. That's why it's not just a simple cultural uh, aspect like as a flag, it's a much more, it's a representative uh, symbol. Now, thank you. Because the truth is, the monarchy family is exactly like the president, the president back in Israel. It's the it's the body that goes goes around the world, meet with, talk, actually represent the British people around the world. And that is actually the job of the monarch. That is what we're supposed to do. Which which we we're clear, we've cleared the, the difference between them and other cultures. Similar sure. about how actually they have active actions that actually do affect on the people like you yourself said they actually they are, they are actually human beings of course and also about the part of they are not just cultural they are also representative but we never heard a refer, uh, and refute on that so that stands in the debate. Jokhla Marok is absolutely also cultural and representative okay so by that now let's see what's so problematic about it. Why is that so problematic that is my second round of clash about why there is absolutely no justification for monarchy in a democracy. Well the first reason is about Actually, the equality part. Actually, the fact that monarchies are people that are born to be kings or princesses or whatever, uh, they are born to it because they have that blood. They have that blue blood or, or any name that you want to give to it. But actually, we believe it has no place in our because democracy stands on principles of equality. It stands upon that you get to where you get because of your profession, because of because of what you do, because how you were raised, not because you were born to a certain family and that why you have get you get someone more rights than others and you get like this huge power of other people. Now this was also never refuted. They did not refute about, about what, what is so problematic about the thing we have in a democracy actually, something that is not democratic, something that represents unequality. Okay, inequality is completely unjustified. But the only thing they said to us, and I give credit to that, is the example of Holland. Now, an example is very nice, but you never hear a complete explanation to why actually it is not, why actually it does not harm. We actually show you how it does harm a, a, a democracy from moral aspect and practical as you get to on. Second very important justification part is about the choosing part. And the last speaker actually said the example, well, yes, they do not choose, but they don't, we, do, we have no problem with unrational choosing. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a huge problem with unrational choosing. In a democracy, we do not, I'll take it in a second, in a democracy, we do not allow people to choose if their choice is unrational, exactly like in the case of drugs. People love drugs. But we believe, as a government, some government believe that drugs are unrational, unrational to use, therefore we ban some of the drugs, yes. First of all, we never said that we have no problem with an unrational cho uh, choosing. And second of all, we said that basically we elect who represents us in, a, in an executive way. That is true for David Cameron, but it's not true for Queen Elizabeth, which we've showed you that does have power. You yourself moved from where they have no power well, to they have some power. We believe that even if they have some power, we prove to you that you don't have much more than that, it's still a problematic in a democracy to let actually a family, someone have some power over the country and over the people, and yet not to be chosen by it. And we say about here how it's unrational for uh, people actually to love the monarchy because it's, there is a lot of propaganda in the country. People are raised to love Queen Elizabeth. People are raised to sing God save the Queen. People are raised that way. That's why at the end of the day, the people that there are some people who actually understand the damages the monarchy caused to democracy, but even people who don't do not think that because they are unrational, because they were raised like that. And that is something Sir. we believe, now thank you, is problematic in democracy. So why don't you use that? There's no real justification for a monarchy in And what are the practical harms? Now thank you. Well, that we have two main practical harms: the economic one and the above the law which was a very important point. Now, economically, really short, about the castles, the, the only few we heard about that people will go to castles more if Queen Elizabeth is, is the, the, the monarch. Well, we believe 
We believe that is not the case. We believe people also in France go to, we see it, not, no problematic. The truth is, the real reason we complain about the money is because the money goes to something that citizens do not choose, did not choose, and actually can go to other places that the government should actually help about because the, the people have never uh, chose the government to help its people and not to uh, fund uh, stuff for the baby of the monarch. Okay, so that's for the second of all, above the law. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a point we raised up in a second speech and we heard no response, completely no response from Tim Austin. We believe that is problematic. In that point, we showed you why these people are actually have, because they are cannot because they are in the law, because they cannot be like re-elected, because they are there, and that's it. They have a feeling that they are above the law. They are not a normal citizen. And we see that problem because at the end of the day, we have people like Prince Harry going on and actually bringing shame to the British people. We believe these people should be responsible. We believe people that represent the country should actually be responsible for the action, should uh, represent the country with dignity, and that is, does not happen because of the uh, because of the fact that the monarchy has such an important part in the law and could not be changed. What I've shown you in my speech is that the job of the monarchy is not only to be called in the court of symbol, it's more, more than that. It's a representative symbol exactly like a president back in Israel. Second of all, there is no justification for a monarchy democracy because A, inequality, it represents a, a principle of inequality in democracy, and B, about how actually people do not choose it and it has power, that's why we're problematic, and it has personal arms. So at the end of the day, we believe you ought to vote. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, ending the constructive speeches for the last round of Part of Europe 2013. We call third speaker outside opposition. Ladies and gentlemen, we have witnessed. 24 minutes of rebuttal and substantive vote from the part of proposition only to actually remain from this debate with the idea that team proposition doesn't actually understand what makes a democracy a democracy. Today we believe that a democracy is actually power to the people in the idea that the fact that people get to choose who represents their will in the making of the laws and who actually has a say in the political affairs of the country. Now, we believe that for a monarchy not to be compatible with actually democracy, we believe that team proposition had the burden to prove to you, to prove to us that um, <clears throat> Monarchy is an obstacle for people to speak up their minds in that country and actually monarchy has actually put a foot down on what people wanted and instead of doing what people actually wanted to do, it went over their democratic rights and actually interfered with the democracy in that place, therefore making it incompatible for the democracy to actually exist with a monarchy. Now, we believe that the criteria of team proposition to actually prove their burden today was first of all that in a monarchy some people are better, that they are not choosing their queen, and third of all that they have old ideas. I will tackle all of this and will prove to you today that a monarchy cannot can actually live together with a democracy by going to two points. First of all, talking about choosing representation, and second of all, talking about the symbol of a monarchy in a democracy. <coughs> 
Now, starting with the first point, and we are talking about choosing representation. We believe that the representation in countries that actually have a democracy, but also have a royal family, is the fact that they get to choose the prime minister. Now, let's take a look at the history of the UK a, a little. Who decided to actually make an intervention in the Falkland Islands? Who decided to actually pre uh, to actually make private a lot of companies, a lot of um, state companies in the UK. Well, we believe that it was the prime minister of the UK at that time, that being um, Margaret Thatcher. We believe that the queen had no say in actually in the political affairs that the prime minister does. Well, more than that, team proposition keeps on telling us that, well, you know, the queen actually goes and meets with other politicians and, says who they, and actually sits down and has a talk with them about about how to make our countries better. Well, no, ladies and gentlemen, we believe that there is no example of the Queen of England actually well, going on a plane to talk with the President of the United States. It was the uh, it was David Cameron that actually attends these political meetings because he is the man that actually has the saying in what laws are passed. Because he is the man that actually represents the will of the people in the saying what laws should be passed or not. Now, Team Proposition also tells us that apparently we actually agree that the Queen has some power in, in a political matter by referendums. No, ladies and gentlemen, we said that the queen vouched for for referendums and more than that what is a referendum is the question that we ask our citizen is not a law that we pass it's not it's not legalizing something or saying that we will not do this in our country anymore. We just pose our citizens in a moment, sir. We just pose our citizens a simple question to show that we are actually a true democracy that at its core cares a lot about what people want and we want our people to speak their minds up. Go. The Queen's statement has so much power <laughs> because people adore it blindly and by that effect actually David Cameron to do so. That is why the Queen does have power. That's why it's completely undemocratic to keep a monarchy. All right. <clears throat> Now we believe that it has actually no connection to who poses the question, to the answer that anonymously people ask. We believe that there can, can be no connection and the referendum would have been just the same if David Cameron asked the people, but the or the Queen asked the people. We just showed through that referendum <clears throat> that we as a state with democratic, uh, with democracy and the monarchy living within it, we actually hold the values of people speaking up as much as they can and people actually interfering a lot with the laws that we take. Now, we believe that if people, the team proposition told us that well, people don't actually like they have a monarchy. Well, then we asked team proposition the question why there were so many people happy when they had a new heir for England? Why were so many people in the streets when the royal wedding happened? Well, we believe it is because the royal family takes care that people actually like having a monarchy. And it takes care exactly through the fact that it shows that it caters to people's needs and it shows that it actually cares about what people want in a democratic No, thing. You sit down. It actually shows that it wants to do what is best for its people, no matter of who is in power and imposing that load. <clears throat> no, yes. Do people go ahead and crash down the site that sells David Cameron's clothes? Clothes? No, they don't adore him as much as they adore the Queen. Right, it's true that people don't adore David Cameron as much as they adore the Queen. Now, well, if we think about it, people in uh, people in all other states, like for example, people in America probably don't adore Obama as much as they adore Brad Pitt. But then again, we have no problem with that because we believe that the queen is just a symbol. And because she is just a symbol and that actually shows also yeah. that she caters the people and poses no obstacle into democratic, into a democratic country, is that we believe that these two are common. Now moving on to <clears throat> the next point that is talking about symbols. Now, with the team proposition has been talking about to us about equality. Now, they have told us that it's not right for someone to be rich just because it was born in a rich family. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this happens all over the world, be the country democratic, a monarchy, or a dictatorship. We believe that these things actually happen. People, children are born in rich families, and they actually uh, get a lot of money from their friends without having to work. People actually do those things no matter what. Politicians do a lot of money, for example, and we believe that the queen, for being actually a symbol, 
does actually need to receive those money to remain the symbol of Britain. We believe that the UK actually cares for having her as her symbol. Now, we believe that they, they talked about equality. We believe that uh, the royal family does answer in front of the law. Now, we don't see the queen going around and doing whatever she wants, no matter what the laws in the country are. Now, we believe that just because <clears throat> one prince had a drink and then went uh, naked around, we believe that he should have been punished. The fact that he was forgetting, it's no actually change to what happens in a lot of diplomacies around the world, that politicians are sometimes forgetting their mistakes in the sake of the making their country to keep looking good. We believe that these mistakes should be forgotten. Now, on the fact that they have actually old ideas. Now, we believe the fact that they have old ideas actually preserve the heritage and the cultural uh, traditions of that country. But at the same time, we see that this we see that these apparently old ideas don't actually interfere with the laws the country passes. Therefore, making our point about how people uh, actually choose who passes the law even stronger. Now, also talking about the fact that, well, people should choose their symbol. No, ladies and gentlemen, not the people from that country choose the symbol, but it's the other people that view that country in a certain way. Now, we believe that it's a good thing that people see the UK as uh, the country of the Queen, because people, a lot of people go there just to see the Queen. A lot of people want to hear about Britain because they see it as a very different thing. Now, for all those reasons, I hope today that you oppose the motion. Thank you. Okay. Ending the debate on side opposition, we call for the little price speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, side proposition believes that proving incompatibility is enough to prove that the principles of, de principles of democracy are undermined under what the, they do, under what the monarchy represents. And I will show to you how they don't even accomplish this. And I will go to three, to two main points. First, uh, that the queen, uh, what the queen does, how it is just simple. And second of all, that about this bloodline representation and about how it is when it comes to the elections. And I will prove to you that the principles of democracy, those of free voting and those of equality, actually still stand today. And it is fairly simple to see that uh, after this. Now, let's see about uh, the first point. The queen, first of all, the queen does not go to political assemblies. The queen does not go to represent these countries when it comes to the, uh, to the laws that pass. The queen is merely a symbol. That is what we have been trying to prove to you today, that the queen stands for the UK, that the queen stands for Netherlands as the king stands for Spain or for Japan, just as a mere symbol. And I quote them, and they tell us, well, the third speaker tells us the queen is just a symbol, just like the president back in Israel. We prove the point exactly by the fact that they can see this. We see that they tell us, well, this symbol actually has power. We have proven this to you and have asked the question, what power leads in the power to pose questions to the people that is in power, that is just a mere suggestion, that is just a mere vouching for them. We believe that they do not go to other countries in order to uh, politically assemble with other leaders, but even if they do go to other countries to do this, they go merely as a symbol. They go merely to represent the culture, because we do believe that symbols aren't chosen by the people in any way. For example, Belgium is uh, one of these uh, monarchies that we are talking about today, but you do not know that Belgium has a king. No, you know that Belgium is known for its chocolate, ladies and gentlemen. That is what the symbol is. It is very, very simple. That is how this works. We believe that on this point, the queen remains as a symbol. The queen stays as a symbol, just like we have been trying to prove all day today. Now, let's see. On the second point, they have a problem with this representation, how it isn't elected, and how the queen is there by bloodline. Now, let's make 
But let's see what our response was. Our response was that there is a difference between cultural representation and political representation. And the first one, when it comes to cultural representation, the queen. We have the queen, like when we talk about the UK. It represents the UK as a mere culture, represents their historical heritage. That is exactly what the queen stands for. It has no political uh, power other than, well, voting for questions other than uh, doing that. And Second of all, about the political representation, it is very sad that Team Proposition did not respond to this point. The fact that the people in UK, for example, the people in Belgium, the people in Japan are all part of democracies that actually elect their executive leaders. Team Proposition has no, had no say in this. We believe that they should have had. We believe that they have the full political uh, disclosure, the full political power, like David Cameron has, like, the prime, like other prime ministers have. They are the ones that fulfill the needs of the people through the laws that they pass. That is abundantly clear. What is the role? Because we, we simply say that, well, Team Professional might believe that the prime minister is useless. We believe that it is a representative of the people. We believe that uh, the government isn't there to be loved by the people and adored by the people just like the queen is it is there to do its job its executive job that is what we have been trying to prove to you today that the government that is elected does its job for the people this is still a democracy it is not incompatible in any way just because the queen is a cultural symbol ladies and gentlemen we believe that at the end of the day the principles of democracy remain intact when we talk about the monarchies in, democ in democracies, the principles of free vote, the principles of equality actually stand strong today, even in countries like the UK, even in countries like the Netherlands, through everything that we have been trying to do today. We hope that you oppose this motion. Okay, we will now call for the reply speaker of team proposition to end this debate. Since we're all tired and we want to finish this debate, I'm going to show you shortly and very efficiently how we won this debate, no matter if the Queen has some political power or only represent the people. So let's begin. I'm going to ask two questions. The first question is actually, does the Queen, does the monarch, has a political power and has a political influence? And, and if, it, if, if he does have it, is it a justified uh, influence? We see that they began, began to claim that the monarch doesn't have any influence, any political influence at all, but then they actually told us, but listen, the queen influence regarding the referenda of Falkland well, Islands, the queen influence regarding giving gay people the right to get married. So actually, they contradicted themselves a bit. Now, we explain to you again and again that if the queen influences, even if it's just by suggesting to Cameron to do things, and he does that because he knows that there are um, people blindly admire the queen because of the irrational and, uh, and not the choice, that this is enough because the queen wasn't elected and the queen do influence. So this is enough for us to say, guys, this is not justified. This is contradicting contradicting democracy and democracy values that the people that influence politics should be elected by the people and therefore only by that it stands against democracy and actually harms the democracy. Now, which is our burden in this debate as we agree with him uh, opposite. Now, where we believe that because the Queen was elected uh, by the people and because it harms the ideas of democracy, of all the ideas that prevent us to develop and to have progress, this is problematic. We don't think that the fact that the Queen of, of the Netherlands uh, support gay marriage, that we don't say the Queen itself the, herself is old and, and have preserved ideas. We believe that the main idea of monarchy is old and outdated. Now let's move on to the second question, which is the main question of the debate. Does the representative by the monarch, if, uh, even if he doesn't have any influence on politics at all, help the people or harms the people. 
We heard from team opposition that it helped. Why? Because they love the queen. This is basically the, the main idea of their case. But we told you that, first of all, the choice to love the queen is irrational and not free choice. That they are raised from age zero to love the queen. And we told you that the fact that they love the queen is not enough for us to allow it. We told you that in a democratic country, when you have something which is not a free choice and which harms the people so badly, we forbidden on we forbidden that thing. We do not allow to have a thing exactly as drugs. And we believe that in this case, because of loving the queen is not a free choice, and because it harms society, we it doesn't have place in a democratic country. Now, what we told you, we showed you a lot of harms. We showed you that, first of all, it harms the values of democracy, values like equality, and that the people are the rules in the country, and that the uh, people in the uh, monarchy are not equal to other people, they are not under the law, they are not supervised in the same way. What we heard in response, they said that we should enforce the law, okay? But nothing other than that. We never heard why it is okay to give someone so much power in a democratic country to say he is not equal, he is not like everybody else, and therefore we give him power only because he was born to some certain family. Now the second reason we gave you is that we have an economical harm to the people uh, in the amount of billions and billions of dollars and euros, which is not justified because in a democratic country, people should decide where their money goes to. And in one of his aside to democratic countries, the people do not decide that the money will go to the queen, it simply goes there. We never heard a, a, a right respond to that. They said if the people want to, it's justified. But we showed you that the people doesn't want to. And then third, we showed you that they do not represent the people. Well, again, not really a response to that. And they themselves said that the queen is a symbol, and then they said the queen is not a symbol. We got a bit confused. So as I showed you, we showed you that it is not justified to have monarchy with democracy because monarchy harms the democracy. And therefore, ladies and gentlemen, I beg you to propose.